Welcome to Northwestern Nevada, Pyramid Lake, the largest natural lake in Nevada on a cloudy, uh, previously rainy day. These are, this is the remnants of what was once Hurricane Hillary that came blasting through Southern California and is now up here in Northwestern Nevada. Um, thanks for joining me on this beautiful day. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey on my way out west to explore some other geology highlights but I thought I'd stop here at Pyramid Lake. Uh, I've always been a little bit captivated by this lake and some of its unique features and so we're going to spend some time here uh, looking along the margin of the lake at some of the unique geology we find here. Now Pyramid Lake was once part of a huge freshwater lake that existed in the Pleistocene called Lake Lahontan. Let me show you a little map here to give you a little bit of, of context. Um, so here is the California Nevada border. Uh, Reno sits right about here. And this is Pyramid Lake, this black little smudge here. Lake Tahoe down here, Walker Lake. But Lake Lahontan occupied this blue area here. So this was a, an interesting shaped lake because of all the uplifted mountain ranges, it was somewhat um, odd in shape, had a lot of islands to it, but basically linked seven uh, basins, some of which still have lakes today, and these seven lakes then constituted Lake Lahontan at its maximum about uh, 13 to 14,000 years ago. This was actually bigger than present day Lake Ontario. So this was a huge um, freshwater lake that sat over northwestern Nevada during the Pleistocene. It was a contemporary of Lake Bonneville, which sat over western Utah um, in this same region called the Great Basin or the Basin in Range. So giving you a little bit of context here, Pyramid Lake, which is Nevada's largest natural lake, uh, is just a tiny little speck in the vast system of what we had here at Lake Lahontan. Um, and you can actually see some of the shorelines just across the way here, probably a little bit difficult to tell, but oh, surrounding this basin all throughout the Reno area, uh, at least to the east of Reno, around Fernley, uh, you can see a lot of these shorelines uh, up on the hillsides and in all sorts of places here. This is where the Truckee River, the Truckee River uh, drains out of Lake Tahoe, flows off the east side of the Sierras. This is the final uh, stopping point for the Truckee River, which flows through Reno. And at its deepest, Lake Lahontan was over 900 feet deep. But the real attraction here, the main thing I want to take you on a tour of, is these exceptional deposits of tufa. Tufa is going to be the word for today, the, the rock type that we're going to explore. There are some incredible just shapes and varieties, textures and forms uh, that have all uh, come together because of the unique uh, chemistry that we have here in the lake. And I don't understand the chemistry and the biology well enough to go into a lot of detail, but basically there's springs that existed beneath Lake Lahontan and there's still springs uh, underneath this lake today. It's a regional low point and so there's water, uh, fresh water, groundwater coming up through this. And as it does so, um, the calcium and the, carbon, the carbonate in the, the lake water uh, combine together to form a calcium carbonate rock, a type of limestone that we call tufa. And all of these crazy shapes and forms you see here, let's start with a really impressive one, are all a result of this calcium carbonate, this tufa precipitating out of the water. And so what you get are just crazy forms and shapes like this, these big reefs. Now this one's been uh, weathered and broken off of its pedestal here. Um, but a lot of times you'll see these, these needles, these needle-like forms on the interior. These are sometimes called phenolite. Um, and then as you get towards the outer edge, you can see it's definitely forming a concentric ring. Uh, as you get towards the outside edge, it looks a little bit more like broccoli or cauliflower, I suppose. Here's Here's a little tube up here. Um, so these were all springs. So the, where these are in place, they'll be oriented vertically and where they've been weathered and knocked over uh, by wave action or other processes, um, they'll be laying on their side like this one here. Uh, let's see if we can find 
So these are all more or less in place here. But I think what we'll do with this video is we're going to be kids. We're just going to be little kids and explore this kind of wonderland of little tufa towers and cauliflower and almost some of them look like reefs, like coral reefs. Um, just these incredibly bizarre shapes along the margin of Pyramid Lake. Um, and so Lake Lahontan, as was the case with Lake Bonneville, uh, hit its high point about, I think, 15 to 13,000 years ago. The climate was wetter um, and cooler. So the lake was very high and deep. And then eventually, as it started to drop, these tufa deposits uh, became left high and dry. And so they uh, ended up just being exposed here. Here's a nice one here where you can see uh, the concentric rings here. This, so this was a spring. This was a spring at the bottom of the lake, and it precipitated all this tufa while it was underwater. And the tufa is still being deposited and precipitated today. We can head down to the shoreline here again in a second and look at some of the tufa forming on some of the rocks there. Um, but just, just an amazing, I'll put a link to the USGS uh, little publication that I used for this site because they describe in a little bit more detail all the different shapes and such and forms of tufa and varieties you see here. So you can see as we head down towards the water's edge, we've got this slabby um, deposit of hardened tufa that's actually cementing the class together. So you can see pieces of basalt in here, but they're actually cemented together by this tufa deposit, which just forms, forms a little thin veneer, almost like a shelf. Let's drop down here. There we go. You can see how thin this little deposit is here. Actually, a little bit of like almost cross bedding there with this uh, angled unit here and then this shelf above it. But here's where the, the, the tufa is actually forming on the rocks today. So this water is highly concentrated in calcium carbonate and you can see the, the whitish mats that are forming these slimy little deposits that are forming on some of these particles. Again, there's a little bit of biology that goes on as well, some micro microbes uh, that aid in the process. But for the most part, it's this chemical precipitate on the surface here. And just to sh quickly show you um, that it is a type of limestone, we often use hydrochloric acid to test for this stuff. And hopefully you can see it fizzing there a little bit. We'll put it on one of the, one of these other ones. I think it'll, react a little bit better with some of these here. Yeah, there you go. So you can see it kind of bubbling and fizzing and reacting to the acid. Um, let's take a walk over here. Again, this is just sort of like fantasy land. Um, just all these crazy shapes and forms. So we've got this lakeside shoreline slabby deposit of tufa. But then we have these mounds, these, and these shapes over here um, probably represent springs. It's hard to tell. These look like they've fallen down and broken. You can see how uh, lobate these look here. If we look at them on end, yeah, they look a little bit different with some of the concentric rings. Um, you can see it's almost like a, like a popcorn texture, like a cauliflower or broccoli, I guess, too. Uh, and here's a large one that's been busted open. This is similar to the one I showed you at the beginning of the video with the, the thinolite crystals um, sort of surrounding it in the interior. And then it, that kind of grades into uh, more of a cauliflower type texture in here. And then back to those thin needle-like crystals over on this side. Um, let's see. And then lastly, we'll just maybe check these out over here. Some of the more interesting shapes along the shoreline. Oh, this is kind of fun. So here we have, uh, I guess we'd call this a conglomerate. We've got a class of rock, um, but they're encased in and cemented by all of this tufa. You can see another, 
another big chunk here. And here's a really nice one here. We can see some of the concentric rings around this dark volcanic clast here. Um, just really kind of a neat location, a different type of deposit than you might see otherwise. Here's one of these big uh, tufa towers. So presumably they were, these were standing upright. You can see similar ones to these at Mono Lake. Uh, and I'm going to head to the north end of the lake, so there may be a little bit extra to this video, or maybe a, a fully separate video if I find some some more interesting forms and shapes there. Here's some more of the the class with the the rind of tufa around it. Tufa and travertine are actually the same same thing. Um, you might have heard both of those terms. Uh, tufa is just the more porous variety. Travertine tends to be uh, more banded, I guess a little bit more dense, if you will, uh, and tufa is the more porous variety. Here's just a great example of the, the kind of popcorn texture here, grading into the thinolite crystals, the needles, uh, and then kind of back into more of the popcorn texture shape here as we look at the end of this, this big tube. So, very cool. Um, definitely worthwhile if you're in the area around Reno or someplace like that. Take a take an hour or so, drive up here to Pyramid Lake, check out the shorelines, check out the bizarre tufa deposits left from Lake Lahontan. So thanks again for joining me. Appreciate uh, you tagging along on this little adventure. As always, appreciate you liking, sharing, subscribing, all those sorts of things. And there's donate options as well. There's the thanks button at the bottom right of the YouTube screen. Uh, there's a donate button on my homepage. And then there's also a PayPal link in the video description. So thanks again. Signing off from the Tufa Towers and the crazy Tufa deposits of Pyramid Lake in Northwestern Nevada.